Question 1. Which of the particles have the same electronic configuration and the same number of neutrons? So let's do the electronic configuration first. Electronic configuration depends on the number of electrons. So if you figure out that they all have the same number of electrons, they will have the same electronic configuration. The number of protons we can obtain from the data booklet or the periodic table. So answer is B. You can compare your numbers and values to mine here. Right, oxygen, oxide, fluoride and neon will have 10 electrons each and 10 neutrons each. Number two, there is calcium carbonate in a chicken's egg and how much or how many eggs do we need to neutralize this amount of acid? What we can do first is find out the number of or the amount of calcium carbonate within an, a single egg. So 5% of 10 of 50 grams, we have 2.5 grams of calcium carbonate in a single egg and then we divide by the relative molecular mass of calcium carbonate we have 0 0.025 moles of calcium carbonate per egg and then we form an equation for the reaction of the calcium carbonate and ethanoic acid this is calcium ethanoate the salt we can see that two moles of acid will react with one mole of calcium carbonate. The moles of acid will be obtained by the volume multiplied by the concentration. So moles of acid 0 0.1. Moles of calcium carbonate will be half the value. So 0 0.1 divided by 2. So this is the calcium carbonate required. 0 0.05 the number of eggs will be 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.25 right, because this is 0 0.05 is what is required 0 0.025 is what is provided per egg once we do that we can see that we need two eggs to neutralize the acid so the answer is B Number three, we have phosphine, pH three, and the phosphorus has one lone pair. Right, three of the electrons are used for bonding covalent bonds. One pair of electrons are not used. Hydrogen has an empty, uh, empty orbital. It doesn't have any electrons, so. When it forms a covalent bond, the lone pair from the phosphorus is the one that provides both electrons. So it forms a dative bond. So that's a dative bond between pH3 and hydrogen ion. Number four, which one has simple molecular lattice? Going down the options, we have ionic compound, calcium fluoride, metallic structure, nickel, silicon dioxide or silicon oxide is giant molecular, sulfur is the one with a simple molecular lattice, one form will be the one that has eight atoms joined together. Number five, how many moles of methane is inside? We have to use the equation PV equals to nRT. We need to convert the temperature to kelvins plus 60 plus 273. So we have this amount in kelvins. Pressure, we will have to convert it to Pascal. So multiply by 1000. The volume in cubic meter, we can leave it as it is. So we manipulate this equation into 
where most is the subject. We substitute the numbers in. Your gas constant being 8.31, we find out that we have 0 0.2 moles of methane. Once we have this number of moles, we multiply by the MR, 16. That will give us 3.2 grams. Number 6, we have methaldehyde, heat of combustion. How can we find the heat of formation of methaldehyde? So what we can do, is to write out an expression for the heat of formation. One more of methaldehyde the heat of formation is the forming from its constituent elements. So we have carbon solid hydrogen H2 and we have oxygen O2 and then we try to balance the equation to make sure our atoms are accounted for we have 8 carbons 16 hydrogen so 8 H2 and 4 oxygen so this is the heat of formation of your methaldehyde. How can we link it to heat of combustion? One way we can remember is heat of formation or heat of this reaction is equals to heat of combustion of reactants minus heat of combustion of products. This is one general equation you can use if you are given heat of combustion how do we link it to the heat of heat of reaction reactants the sum of the reactants heat of combustion minus the sum of the reactants or sum of the products heat of combustion so reactants we have eight times heat of combustion of carbon eight times heat of combustion of hydrogen. There's no heat of combustion for oxygen. It itself supports combustion. So this is our reactants. And then we go to the product side. We have one mole of methaldehyde form. Heat of combustion of methaldehyde. So op option C will give us the expression for heat of formation. Number seven, purification of copper. So what do we use for copper? We use, first of all, our electrolyte will contain copper ions. Our anode, one of them will be pure copper and the other will be impure copper. Or our, our electrodes, one of them will be pure, one of them will be impure. The cathode is where the reduction takes place. So your copper two plus will be reduced to copper metal and as time goes by you have a deposits of copper metal on your cathode your anode is where your impure copper is is where oxidation takes place so your copper ions or your copper atoms here will be re oxidized to form copper ions and contribute into the solution. So as time goes by, the anode will get smaller and smaller. Since we have a removal of copper ions at the cathode and the contribution of copper ions at the anode, right, the concentration of copper ions in the electrolyte remains the same. So the intensity of the blue color will have little to no change. So anode decrease. 
number 8 how can we get the greatest percentage of N2O4 the, the question is actually asking how can we shift the equilibrium to the right so first of all we figure out that the forward reaction is exothermic because enthalpy change forward reaction is negative value right, then a the backwards reaction is endothermic so if we want to shift it to the right side if we want to favor the exothermic reaction we have to have a low temperature because a low temperature the system will react to produce heat to counteract the low temperature so a low temperature will favor the exothermic reaction and then pressure wise we have one molecule one mole of gas on the right two moles of gas on the left to ensure that or to facilitate the shifting to the to the right we will need to have high pressure because when the system experiences high pressure it will react to shift the equilibrium to the side where there are less gas molecules so high pressure will shift the equilibrium to the right side a low temperature will shift the equilibrium to the right also so answer is B number nine when a sample of hydrogen iodide is warm the equilibrium below is established and at this temperature hydrogen iodide is 28 times hydrogen or the pressure of hydrogen so what the question is trying to tell us is we do not have any hydrogen iodide or hydrogen or iodine in the first place in the mixture so it was zero zero in other words whatever amount of hydrogen form during equilibrium will be equal to the amount of iodide or iodine form in the equilibrium because their ratio is 1 is to 1 once we know this we can set up a table here comparing the equilibrium pressure hydrogen and iodine are equal as explained and hydrogen iodide is 28 times that of hydrogen so we do not know the exact pressure but we know that if, we, if these two are x then hydrogen out will be 28x we form an expression or equation for kp pressure h2 i2 and pressure of hi we have to square it because of the ratio 2 here we put in the values or the unknowns x multiplied by x x square 28x which is the hydrogen aldehyde we square the whole thing so conveniently we will have the x squares cancelling each other out so we do not really need to bother what the x is after all so we have 1 over 28 square okay you use your calculator you can see that is option a